In Health Canada's Food Directorate, regulatory toxicology studies are conducted in the Bureau of Chemical Safety to produce original data and new knowledge to answer questions essential for identifying the adverse effects of chemicals that contaminate food and impact on health. The effects on human health could be long term, they could be short term. Long term effects can lead to chronic disease states such as cancer or disorders of the reproductive system, the immune system, the nervous system. The health effects data with exposure data are used to do risk assessments. Risk assessments are what the food directorate will use to make decisions about how the hazard should be managed and determine policy. One very useful tool is to use laboratory rodents in toxicology studies and within those studies the role of toxicologic histopathology is key to determine the nature of the hazard and characterization of the hazard. We look for effects of toxins and natural ingredients on the well-being of the animal and our role is to establish areas of interest, specific organs. As pathologists we help to assess levels of ingredients that cause negative effects on the life of laboratory animals and from there we help uh, to design plans for regulating the substances that end up in food. One recent study focused on Fumonisum B1, a naturally occurring fungal toxin. Fumonisum B1 is a known carcinogen, so in this case we were using it to validate a cancer-prone rodent model. Recently a lot of cancer-prone rodent models have been developed for regulatory usage because they allow us more sensitivity to detect carcinogens in a shorter time frame. So in this case, the mouse we were testing was deficient in one gene for P53, and P53 plays a really important role in the cell by repairing damage to DNA. The premise behind the model is that if an animal is deficient in P53, it will be unable to repair DNA and it will be prone to cancer. This study allowed us also to generate a dose response for fumonisin. The dose response is really critical for regulatory toxicologists because we need to know the dose at which you see an adverse effect so that we can make decisions about safe levels of contaminants in foods. Furin is a chemical used as a flavoring agent in certain foods, but it can also form during food processing, such as heat treatment for canning through multiple endogenous chemical reactions involving naturally occurring food components. Health Canada has done two things to address this concern. First, we have created a large data set of over 200 samples, including 20 baby foods. This data set has been used to determine the dietary exposure to furan, and this has also been used to do a target surveillance analysis of furan in the foods. We conducted two 90-day feeding studies to determine the no adverse effect levels and to characterize non-neoelastic lesions, including clinical parameters, hematology, gross morphology, and histological parameters. We found typical changes in the liver, liver tumors, related to the dose of the toxin in food of the rats. By a sliding scale of exposure, we were able to establish a no adverse effect level of 0.03 milligrams per kilo per day per rat. The data from these two studies have been published in a peer-reviewed journal, Toxicological Pathology, Joint Expertise Committee of Food Additives, and the World Health Organization have concluded that furin is of human health concern and therefore it is of research priority. New technologies allow us now to look at tens of thousands of genes or thousands of proteins or hundreds of metabolites simultaneously in a sample. From all the studies we collect each sample for whatever tissue or organ. And it allows us to screen them simultaneously, which is a unique method that we haven't had before. We can also look at individual cells through laser capture dissection and also through immunohistochemistry. These are powerful tools that supplement and integrated with pathology allow us to look at the overall picture. Toxicologic pathology is always going to be important for risk assessment. However, the development of new techniques in molecular pathology is also providing tools 
that will enhance the risk assessment because now we can visualize the changes at the tissue level and link them to do alterations in the genome.